Hey guys, what is going on? We are back for another video on the QR series. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can filter based on date, based on student, and also uh, how we can make a sign in sign out process. So let's get straight into it. So previously we've seen how we can create a tenant system with QR codes and how we can uh, solve some of the issues that you guys have come up with. Now uh, that video won't solve every one of your problems. There will be problems that will prop up and these kinds of videos are here to help you out to try to figure out um, and troubleshoot what the problems might be. In this video we're going to start off with how to filter by date and by student. So let's jump right in. So we have here our original spreadsheet. This is the one that we made in the video. Um, I've also got the QR sheet here and uh, the name badges, which you might've seen at the end of that first video in the series. Now in this uh, spreadsheet here, I do have some extra columns here. I don't know what they're for. I can't remember what I used them for. Must have been an example for something that I can't remember, but we don't actually need them. So I'm just going to get rid of all of them. Um, I also see that a lot of people have been using this spreadsheet, this uh, QR code. So if we scroll all the way down, we can see that there are, uh, oh, keep on going, even more, uh, almost 5,000, 4,600 rows here. So a lot of you have been using this, really great to see. Uh, continue to use it as a tester, it still works brilliantly. Um, and if you want to make a copy of this for yourself, you can go up to the top, click on File, and then uh, make a copy and that will make a copy in your Google Drive so you don't have to request a copy uh, for me to send you. You can just do it yourself. So um, in this uh, section, in the first section, we're just going to see how we can create a filter based on either um, date or name of the student. So to do that, we click on the plus button in the bottom left corner and let's uh, just organize this by naming it. I'm going to call it filter by date. Uh, and we'll create a, another one filtered by student later on. Now the first thing if we're filtering by date is we need to know what date we want. So let's uh, say what date do you want. Uh, today is the 21st of August 2021 so I'm just going to write that in there. Uh, remember if you're in a different country maybe your um, date system is different so just format it however you you have your date. Now the uh, good thing about having a date field in here is that we can now double click on this and it will bring up a date picker automatically. We don't have to set that up, you just type in a date and it sets a date picker for you. Just double click and it's ready to go. So if you wanted to go to the 19th of August, just click on that. I'm going to go 21st of August because I did see that there were some from the 21st of August in this sheet. There we go, there's a few there. Okay, let's get into the formula. Our formula will start with an equal sign as usual, starting with a query. A uh, query is uh, similar to a SQL type language. It's not quite SQL if you're familiar with it. So if you know SQL, this is gonna be really easy for you. If you've never heard of SQL before or never used SQL type language before, don't worry, I'll walk you through how we can um, bring up different information using query. So the first thing we want is what are we going to query? Query. We are querying all of the information that we've collected from our spreadsheet or from our QR codes. The way I like to do this is just click in A1 and then just go down uh, a few and you'll see we have A1 to B6. I'm just going to delete that six on the end and that selects everything from A1 all the way down to B. We put a comma. And then the next thing we'll do is a double quotation mark to say that we want to select. Uh, now we could say A or B, A and B, sorry. Or if we want to select everything, then we can just use a star meaning everything. Select everything where A equals, that's column A, this is our date or date and time column, where A equals, actually let's make it contains, where A contains the date that we want. Now the date that we want is, uh, if I put in the 21st of August, 2021, then this will not work. A single quotation mark to end the date, double quotation mark to end the query, and then a um, bracket to end the uh, function. If we press enter on that, we'll see nothing comes up. Uh, there is nothing in that um, array that has this date. And the reason that is, is because uh, the way the SQL language works is we need to have the correct format for the date. So we start off with the year 2021 and then a hyphen and then the month is 08 not just 8 08. 
and then a hyphen, and then the date 21. Nothing comes up because I actually forgot to put in here where A contains the date, and then it tells which date it is. And there we go, we have all of the information that we have, uh, that we need. Chucky has signed in a whole bunch of times, he's gone on a rampage and just uh, signed in a whole bunch. Okay, um, but that means that we'd have to come in here and change out this date every time we want to, but we did set up this date in the top, so let's actually use that, we'll reference it. So let's highlight the date, and we're going to type double quotation mark and then two ampersands, and then another double quotation mark. So here all we've done is uh, we've concatenated uh, a whole bunch of information, but inside this information we've actually left it blank. Inside here, we're going to put in what we're actually going, uh, where the date is. The date is in cell B1, so we can just press B1. Press enter on that, and we get an error. Why do we have an error? Let's get rid of the spaces. Oh, that's why, because B1 is the wrong date format. So we need to change this B1. The format that we want is year hyphen month hyphen day. So let's set that up with a text formula. So we have text of B1 and then we put in how we want the text to be displayed. Start with the year, four letters, four Y's, and then a hyphen, two M's for month, and then a hyphen, two D's for day. Press enter and we have all of our information. Now that may not seem very straightforward uh, if you are new with query, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. So um, that's pretty much how to, how to collect the date. So now we can change the date here. Let's say that we want, I don't know, the 17th of August. I hope there's some dates there. Oh, there is. You guys have been scanning. There was a lot of scans on the 17th of August. So you guys have been doing a great job collecting all of this data for me. Now let's switch it up a bit and see which dates a student has signed in on. So let's open up a new tab. Let's call this filter by student. Let's put in the, which student we want to collect. Now, in this case, we have to be very careful about the name that we put in. If we put in something like Chucky Finster, that actually is not correct because Chucky's name's not spelt that way, it's spelt with an IE. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have all of our spelling correct. We don't want the user to be able to put that in, uh, so instead we're going to create a drop down list. We go up to data up the top. Um, data validation, list from a range, and then our range is going to be everything in form one responses. So we click on the uh, this cell button, and we want to go to form responses one, everything in form responses one from B2 up to B. Click on OK, and then save, and now we have, whoops, filtered by student. Now we have every single student automatically uh, entered. And then we can just pick which ones by clicking on their name. Super quick, super simple. And it prevents any spelling mistakes later on. Okay, now just like last time, we'll start with a query. Open up a query. What information are we going to query? Well, again, we're querying A to B from the form responses page. Delete the last number so that we get A1 to B. Put a comma. This time we're going to select all where B, that's this column here, is equal to the name that we put in that cell. So again, we'll put a single quotation mark that starts the text that we are going to enter. A double quotation mark because we want to end the query there. An ampersand because we're going to concatenate, continue the query and then select B1 from our filter by student sheet. Another ampersand, double quotation mark, single quotation mark, double quotation mark bracket. Press enter and this gives us a full list of every time Lillian has um, signed in. Now we don't need to see Lil's um, name every time, so let's actually just change this select star button to select just column A. And that gives us just column A. <clears throat> we don't need to see Lil's name every time because we have already selected it here. 
we can change these and we can see the names are or the, the information down below is changing. So that's how we filter by date and by student. Another request that's come through quite a lot is how do we create a sign in sign out system. For that let's go to filter by date. We'll set it up next to this section here. In D3 let's keep it in line with the, the timestamp and the name and I'm just going to move this date over to D1. The reason for that is uh, shortly we'll just hide all of this information. Actually let's just take this and cut it and paste it up in A1 and then later on we'll be hiding this so we won't be able to see it. it won't be in the way. Okay um, so let's see how we can uh, set this up. First off let's have a name then let's go with uh, the time they signed in, time they signed out, and the duration that they were in. We'll select all of that and bold it to, because it is our heading. Let's bold all our headings. Now for the name, uh, the, we're not going to start our query here. First we're going to start with a unique formula. We want a unique formula because we want to know just the students that have signed in on this particular day. Um, I'll just walk you through that, type in unique, open a bracket and we're going to select this list of students here. From B2 to B, so I select B2 to B6 and then I just get rid of the number on the end and then close bracket and press enter. This is all of the students that signed in on the 17th of August. Um, actually let's just jump back into that one because I saw a little error that we can quickly fix. We see that there's a gap there because there's a gap here. For some reason when one of you scanned it, it didn't create a, it didn't um, submit a student. So uh, let's say up in the query, we want to select A, sorry, select all where A contains the date and I'm just going to put it in after the where, where B is not null and then put an and. So that's going to look in column B on the other, on the other sheet the other tab and it's not going to return any empty rows. Press enter on that and we can see we only have filled in rows. Okay so we've chosen uh, August 19th because we have a good amount of sign-ins and uh, I'm guessing sign-outs. Um, so in our sign-in let's start with a query. Let's select all of this information, again A2 to B comma, select, um, we just want the time. So column A where column B equals, and then I'm going to select Kimmy's name. So to do that again, was we'll single quotation, double quotation, ampersand, and then select the name you want, ampersand, double quotation, single quotation, double quotation, close bracket. Is it really only one? Yep, Kimmy's only got one, um, one value. But we can see that Chucky has a few values. So when we copy this down to, to, to Chucky's, actually I just want to lock that, um, that information. When we copy it down to Chucky's, it's actually going to give us multiple values. Alice is because Chucky was uh, a bit trigger happy and signed in too many times. So this is a bit of a downside and just a bit of a rustic way of uh, creating this sign in sign out system. So uh, let's just limit by one. So that just give us, gives us the first, um, the first of those entries. Coming back into the query, I'm going to uh, put a dollar sign on this letter D but not on the five. So that means that we can copy this down and we see we get different times because this one is for Lil, this one's for Angelica and this one's for Timmy. Okay so now I'm going to take, um, let, let's use uh, Chucky's time here because we know Chucky has two um, entries. So let's take this and copy it across to the, our, our sign out. Now this won't make sense just yet because it's exactly the same time. So what we'll do is inside our formula just after D5 and the ampersands and then reopening our query. Let's type in order by column A. 
So it's going to order by column A, the times in descending order by putting in DSC, DESC descending. Press enter on that and we can see this is the last time that Chucky signed or scanned his, um, his QR code. First time, last time. We can copy that across to each of the students. The duration is just the difference between this time and this time. For Kimmy, it's not actually going to be any difference, but for the others, it is. It's in decimal, which is a little bit weird, so let's change the format to uh, click on number and then go down to duration. So we can see that Chucky was signed in for 17 hours, 36 minutes. And if we do some mental calculation, we see from uh, 6 p.m. back to half past midnight, 17 and a half hours, makes sense. So that's how we can create a very rustic sign in, sign out, sign out system. There are issues with it, uh, but that is one way to do it. And if the students are careful with what they're scanning, then this works perfectly fine. Now this is the end of the QR series for Google Sheets. However, that's not the end of the QR series in total because very soon uh, I'll have some videos coming out using Microsoft products and how you can create an app that sort of gets around some of the issues that pops up in the Google Sheets um, QR ser series. For example, um, a lot of you are concerned that someone else could, could scan for a friend or could scan the whole list of things. Well, in Microsoft, we have a way around that. So if you have Microsoft 365 or a Microsoft school, then stay tuned for those videos and I'll see you there.